Now coming to the contents of this uh, article, The Laugh of the Medusa, you know, mostly it is very difficult to uh, categorize or, you know, uh, analyze the contents of an article like The Laugh of Medusa because, you know, uh, it's a kind of a speech. It's a kind of, you know, she was a rhetorician also, a rhetoric argument that she makes. But uh, at your academy, we have tried to give certain headings and under those headings, we would discuss the law of the Medusa. This work, the law of the Medusa, is about woman writing. It introduces woman writing. Helen Ciso says uh, that this work will be the beginning of a new phase in human history. And that would be that females have to write. Rather, she urges females to write. And she says that this work is about the writings of the woman. As I, I said earlier that this work introduces a creature feminine. Now you need to keep in mind that Helen Ciso is not the first or the last feminist to talk about woman writing. Earlier uh, it was Virginia Woolf also who in a room of one's own talks about woman writing. Now, in woman writing, uh, there would be slightly different context. For example, when Virginia Woolf talks about woman writing, she talks that woman should write. Though she does not, uh, you know, define or, you know, give to the woman a particular field, a particular area to write about. But what she says that woman should read and woman should write. Now, it was in 1929 that A Room of One's On was written and from that time onwards also we find not many females have written. The second woman or female writer who says that woman should write would be Helen Ciso and she here goes a step ahead. She does not only tell woman that you have to write but she specifies what you have to write and she limits woman writing to the body of the woman. She says that you have to write about your body. You have to express your body. So that would be a different angle when a feminist theorist says that, a that females have to come on the field of writing, in the field of writing, in the ground of writing, and they should specifically write about their bodies because their bodies have uh, for a great uh, you know, reason uh, better known to the men being ignored. However, this statement would be slightly in contradiction with what Virginia Woolf says. She says, woman in fiction, if you have read uh, A Room of One's Own, where she says that when we talk about woman in fiction, she is described as the best creature, or for that matter, a creature better than man in fiction. But when Helen Ciso says she thinks that woman has not been presented f fairly in literature, therefore there is a great need that women write about women, about their body. And as I said that Helen Ciso was not the last to talk about women writing, later in 1989 you will have Ellen Showalter who would be writing uh, towards feminist poetics and there she would be coming up gynocriticism and there would uh, she would talk about women as writer and give more broader fields for females to write. So one of the aspects of this work, the laugh of Medusa is woman writing. And secondly, she says that now the future will not be determined by past events. She says that historically we have made great, great mistakes. Historical, historically, female has been oppressed. Historically, the culture, the society has been male dominant, has been phallocentric. But we should not and we will not go back into that past. We will not look into that past or for that matter what Ellen Scholter says into the past sins. We need not go into the past sins. Rather, we will look into the future and we would redefine future. We would reshape future and this reshaping, redefining of future will not be dependent on the past. We will not say that history has been unjust to us. It has been unjust to us 
us let them be we will create new history and this new history would be created when we have a creature feminine when we have feminine writing a writing which would be which would be liberated from a structuralist uh, setup and that structuralist setup which is phallocentric in nature and she says i quote i write this as a woman toward woman when i say woman i am speaking of woman in her inevitable struggle against conventional man and of a universal woman subject who must bring woman and to their meaning in history and she says that is a, this is a, you know a, the beginning of this uh, the law of the medusa is for woman towards woman a woman who is oppressed a woman who is a victim of phallocentric society now i am using this word phallocentric time and again let me explain this phallocentric if you have you don't know about this phallocentricism you know this phallocentricism would be uh, inspired by logocentricism of jacques derrida i have talked about this in uh, the other lecture when i was dealing with life and times of lnc so also but just to say a line about it this is male centric phallocentric means male centric patriarchal where male gives uh, all the laws rules regulations meanings setups limitations all are set by male that is phallocentric and then she says uh, that this is a plea for women writing they should write those who are oppressed but then she says i know why females have not been writing and even i have not written for uh, till i was 27 and she says i know the reason why i have not been writing and the reason for that is i have not been considered worth writing because this writing in this fellow centric society is about great not great but great men it's for great men and great can only be men women cannot be great so if there were some women who wanted to write their writings remain secret because they were not confident enough about themselves and one of the reasons for them not being confident was because they were told by nature they are imperfect i have told earlier also that Helen Ciso says that the writers like Sigmund Freud and Jacques, Jacques Laka have you know propounded this to other men that this woman is an imperfect creature of God. She is man but imperfect man. So she is A versus minus A not A versus B. Now if she is an imperfect man that in return has made female less confident about herself about her existence about her body about her thoughts and that says helen ciso is the greatest crime committed by men against the woman that they made women hate themselves their own, their own body by telling them that you lack you lack that which men has and that lack makes you in return imperfect creature so an imperfect creature cannot come up with great writings but here she says that now is the time when these females should come up and tell the world that we are not imperfect creatures we are not minus a but we are complete perfect creature we must which must be looked or who must be looked at as b rather than minus a and this is a thought this is a psychological development psychological betterment that females have to bring up in themselves and they have to assure themselves that they are not minus a but they are full perfect creatures and when they think like that it would be then that we would write that they would write and this is the best time that they should consider themselves as perfect writer in opposition to what male has been making them think about themselves and they should write and they should write about themselves they should bring up with new narratives which are more beautiful than what male has brought up and 
Other important aspect of this is write about women. Now, as I said earlier, a creature feminine. Women writing which would be about women. And she says, I write women. Women must write women and man, man. So only an oblique consideration will be found here of man. It's up to him to say where his masculinity and femininity are at. This will concern us once men have opened their eyes and seen themselves. We will not write about man. Now when, he says, when she says that we will not write about men or about man, that is, we, that is not like you know they have to talk about ourselves, but she says that we will not write in the structure of man, in the language of man, in the, the themes of man, which he has been thirsting upon us for ages. But I write woman. And you must write about woman. Now again, you have to understand this woman, this femininity, uh, though here, that here are instances and suggestions that this is about the body about the body of female which in particular in this article phalancy so would be hinting at but in a broader perspective a creature feminine or this woman writing is not you know restricted to this narrow definition of writing written by woman or writing written by woman about woman but this would be a writing which would be liberated from fellow fellow centric structures which would be liberated from men dominant themes men dominant structure men dominant styles so that would be a broader interpretation or expression of this woman writing but if we stick to the particular aspect of this it would be right about women because nobody has written about you and even if someone has written about you they have written in their own language their own signifiers their own structures and their structures that is the structure of men have always seen you as imperfect creature as weak human beings as dependent human beings but now you have to come up with a new narrative wherein you have to liberate yourself of all these stigmas all of of all these stereotypes and the man will be in shock and then he will see himself where he is and where his place is and what injustice has he been doing to women since ages she talks in this essay also about anti-narcissism and anti-love. And she says that the biggest crime that man has committed against women is they have made us anti-narcissist, anti-love. You know, we don't love ourselves. They have made us hate our bodies. We are ashamed of our, ourselves. We are ashamed of our bodies. They, they tell us that we are imperfect and we accept and that imperfection which we which we imbibe which we get our our you know uh, our process in that manner in this male dominant society makes us so miserable a creature so you know underconfident we are not not at all confident about ourselves and if we are not confident about ourselves how can we write go back in times and see george eliot she is writing she is female but not confident enough to write with her own name Curer Bells and most of the writers who in past wrote, you know, they were not confident enough to reveal their identity as females. And there have been many female writers. Sylvia Plath, for example, would publish her first work uh, with a pseudonym. And these pseudonyms would reflect the amount uh, of you know lack of confidence that females have had just because of an unjust process of men they made them anti narcissist they made them anti love they made them hate themselves and we have to break all these uh, you know stereotypes all these clutches and we have to you know shatter into the history we have to break into the history and announce to the world that time is up new woman is arriving and new woman is not ashamed of herself she does not lack confidence she has no fear she is up with a different attitude with a different mindset wherein she would write and she would not write in adherence with the fellow centric structure but 
by rebelling against this fellow centric structure and now has come this new woman and it's right time for us that we liberate the new woman and she says it's time to liberate the new woman from old by coming to know her by loving her for getting by for getting beyond this old without delay by going out ahead of what the new woman will be as an arrow quits the bow with a movement and gathers and separates the vibrations musically in order to be more than herself that's the new woman you know who has flown away who is separated from the bow and now she has spread into the various directions she has to spread for that matter and she has to care least about the history she has to care least about the past she has to forget it because if she forgets it and comes out of it only then will she be able to be the new woman or be called as the new woman and this new woman will bring in a new revolution and that new revolution will introduce women in altogether new way in this part of the lecture that is all uh, you can click on this video to watch the next part of this lecture and you can click here to subscribe your academy